Did you know tulip bulbs absolutely have a place in the permaculture garden? Let's talk about it. So I've already planted several. You're gonna see that in this video. Um, but last uh, May, I had the privilege of teaching a class out in Washington and when I was there, uh, catching my flight on the way home, I stopped at a tulip farm and there were millions of tulips. And so I got really inspired by not only the beauty, but the function that I learned tulips have absolutely and actually have in the permaculture landscape. Um, so today we're gonna talk about planting. We're gonna talk about where I'm putting mine, the varieties that I'm using. You can find those all in the show notes with links. And then also I'm gonna tell you why you should, you should consider planting tulips in your permaculture homestead. I made little tags here that show all of the different varieties in bloom. So I know what they look like, what's going where, so I can organize accordingly. But also I made little notations about the height because I don't wanna plant a short tulip behind a tall tulip. So that was just a quick tool that I used in order to get the most bang for my buck visibility wise. You know, obviously it comes down to function, but um, I wanna make sure that it looks good too. Okay, so now that I have my little tags done, I have them all organized according to color and um, height, and I'm just kind of organizing all the bags of the bulbs so that I can make sure I'm planting the right bulbs in the right places. Okay, so this is the site where I'm gonna be planting all 500 tulip bulbs. Um, in this area over here, it's kind of off camera, but I have a flower archway. Underneath the archway, I've already planted anemone and uh, ranunculus on the inside. On the outside, I have a uh, cold hardy kiwi vine arching over, and then I also have some um, climbing roses. On this side, in this big open area, it's a semicircle. I have uh, eight blueberry bushes that are on the perimeter. In the center, I have a magnolia. I am going to be planting all of the tulips from the end of the blueberry border to the opposite side of this trellis. I just want this to be a sea of tulips. Okay, so I excavated an area just off my house. I'm going six inches deep. I double checked all the varieties. They say six inches, but I'm actually gonna plant these closer than the recommended five to six inches that the bag recommends. And the reason is, is because I really want like a sea of those flower heads. And so far, I have two varieties planted. On the far end, I have Brisbane. This is the Belle Epoque. So these are lighter colors. And um, what I'm trying to do is go a gradient from white to black with shades of pink and red in between. And it's just a really subtle change in color. So I am going to continue excavating this. And then jury's out on whether or not I'm going to make this wider or if I'm going to keep going really, really long. I haven't quite decided yet. So last May, I was teaching a permaculture class out in Washington. And while I was there, before I caught my flight, I stopped at a tulip farm. And I think, it was, I think it's called Rusengarda, Rusengarden, Rusengarda, something like that. Um, but I noticed that they were planting tulips very closely and they also planted them underneath trees in somewhat shady areas and they were thriving. And so I thought, you know, this is really beautiful. Is there a permaculture purpose for planting tulips? Because if so, I'm buying some bulbs. Well, sure enough, um, the most obvious thing is that they feed early in the season all of the pollinators. So there's not a lot of flowers early in the spring. Daffodils, tulips, they are some of the first to bloom, and so it offers food source. Second, if you plant these things next to your fruit trees, I'm planting them next to my blueberries, they help to attract the pollinators, which increases the fruit set and the yield on your um, fruiting plants, shrubs, and trees. The last thing is these bulbs are gonna decompact the soil, which not only loosens it, but also helps all the water and nutrients from spring rain runoff to absorb into the soil, which is also gonna enhance and catch and release the nutrients of the plants that are surrounding it. Okay, behind me here, you can see that I have my first column done. Um, I'm about halfway through, this is about 220 tulip bulbs, and you can see it's actually not that big. I would say we're about 10 feet long by probably three, maybe two and a half feet wide. Um, so I did plant rather densely. I am gonna plant on the other side. After I um, set the bulbs, what I did is I just crumpled the dirt over it to make it a nice loose mix. Um, we do have some compacted soil in certain parts of this. And so I wanted to loosen up any of that clay. And then I topped it with a mulch just to kind of keep everything safe and in place 
although the guineas are always tempted by some mulch. I'm actually using hemp. I really like hemp, chopped hemp. Um, I find it a little bit less weedy and a little bit, a little bit more um, moisture retaining than straw. If you're curious about the hemp, this is actually hemp animal bedding from Eat and Pet and Pasture. Um, it's not a sponsored post, I'm just telling you what I'm using. My tulip bulbs are from Rosengarten. I will put all of the um, varieties that I used in the notes. I can put a link to this in the notes. Um, but I did get, go under the archway here, I did get my sections planted blueberries are behind it right there I have an audience so another thing crossed off the list that fall planting for tulips is done